The following question is for members of my audience who are cis, meaning not trans, heterosexual, meaning you like the gender opposite, quote unquote, of your own, white, and uh, whatever else. If you are the, if you see yourself reflected in, you know, McDonald's advertisements and Norman Rockwell paintings, that is who I'm talking to. Okay? How frequently do you wake up and read the news about somebody saying that you specifically, a cis, white, heterosexual guy, that your type of person should be killed? Not just killed, but executed by the state. How frequently do you wake up and hear that? I would be willing to bet never. And I would be willing to bet even further so never credibly. Okay. And what I mean by credibly is that yes, some random YouTube account might say YT people suck, go to hell, kill all men. You might encounter that once in a great while. Okay. Jewish people you all have definitely had that experience, obviously. All right. Well, guess what? I hate to tell you this, but trans people have this happen all the time. And in more ways than one. Not only do trans people wake up and have death threats directly given to them, often randomly, for no reason whatsoever. A sp trans content creators get death threats and, and transphobia all the fucking time, okay? Like, constantly. Even non- Almost, I would almost say especially non-political, but that's not really true. Political ones definitely do get it more because we're conflicting with conservatives directly often. But even non-political content creators have this happen. But trans people are also incredibly unlucky to have the experience of sometimes waking up and having news articles, major news articles from major publications trending on Twitter, uh, posted all over Google, posted all over Facebook, in which that article details how someone in a position of power is making active, um, let's just say active threats and active advocacy in the name of killing people like you. Okay? I would love for any you know, cis, straight, uh, white guys, usually, and women as well, will include everybody. <laughs> um, I would like you to just sit about, sit down and think about that. I don't know that you can even imagine what that is like. What it is like to just wake up in the morning, to want to go do your thing, get up and get ready for work, and you turn on your, your Twitter hoping to say hi to your friends, and you're served up a a trending topic that says firing squad. And then you go, oh my God. And then the description says a GOP candidate advocates for firing squads for trans people. It's bad. It's not good for your mental health. It really, really isn't. Did you know that, um, did you know that in Nazi Germany, before the Nazis took power, the suicide rate of gay people was incredibly, incredibly high because specifically society had gotten to the point at which gay people were being openly mocked and openly threatened in the streets. So every gay person had to live their entire life knowing that at all times there was a good chance that someone was going to make a joke, quote unquote, or an, or an unironic advocacy for their death that they could be beaten up by somebody at any moment because somebody got mad enough and it was within the political uh, zeitgeist to do so. Being discriminated against by a society is not a healthy, fun, or even bearable experience. Trans people are incredibly strong individuals because in order to survive, they have to face every single day a fuckload of 
passive background radioactive hate. But it's not just passive anymore. And it's never really been passive. But that's always there. And then come things like this. Let's read a story together, shall we? This is a story from Vice News. It was published just a couple of days ago, yesterday, actually. Mississippi Republican says trans rights supporters should face a firing squad. Robert Forster tweeted that Robert Foster tweeted that groomers and supporters of trans rights should be executed by firing squad and then doubled down. A former candidate for the Mississippi governorship uh, tweeted last week that groomers and supporters of trans rights should be executed by firing squad. His account has already been reinstated by Twitter. Amazing. Amazing how that works out, right? On Thursday, Robert Foster suggested apparently unprompted that those who want to groom our children and pretend that men are women, the latter a reference to supporters of transgender rights, should be lined up against a wall before a firing squad and sent to an early judgment. Foster reiterated his call for the state-sanctioned murder of trans rights supporters in a message to the Mississippi Free Press. The law should be changed so that anyone trying to sexually groom children and or advocating to put men pretending to be women in locker rooms and bathrooms with young women should receive the death penalty by firing squad, Foster told the website, declaring it, declining it a full interview with Vice, they're saying. Though grooming is a real term used to describe adults who build trust with children and their families in order to sexually abuse them, the American right has recently weaponized the term to portray supporters of LGBTQ youth as being driven by pedophilia. Foster, a former two-term state representative who received 18% of the Republican primary vote in 2019, was the principal author of a 2017 bill allowing Mississippi to execute death row prisoners by firing squad and gas chamber. Can we just read that back again real quick? Foster, a former two-term state representative who received 18% 18% of the Republican primary vote in 2019 was the principal author of a 2017 bill allowing Mississippi to execute death row prisoners by firing squad and gas chamber in 2017. This guy has held political power, just so you know. Foster's post was later removed for violating Twitter's rules, but the ex-lawmaker continued to imply that trans rights supporters should be killed. In response to a tweet from former Mississippi GOP executive director Rich Spencer Ritchie implying P Foster was a fascist, Foster castigated Ritchie and other spineless establish establishment rhinos for conceding every fight with the communists. Now the godless have power and they are destroying our country, Foster tweeted at Ritchie. Soon we will have to deal with this directly. Elected representative advocating to directly kill people. That tweet was still up as of Tuesday morning, as was another where Foster said that a firing squad was a civilized and efficient way of disposing of evil and cheaper than it would be to fly them all up high over the Gulf of Mexico and push them out of a helicopter. Transgendered people are merely victim. It's their pedo groomers that are consumed by evil, Foster said in another post. Foster attempted to backtrack and said that he had limited his calls for execution to groomers of children, but that was a lie. It appears his account was briefly suspended, but Sunday, he's back on the site again. Twitter did not respond to a request for comment from Vice News asking de for details about his suspension. Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves, who defeated Foster in the 2019 gubernatorial primary, signed a bill into law last year that made Mississippi one of a dozen states banning transgender girls from playing youth sports with other girls. A similar law passed last year in West Virginia was blocked by a federal judge. So just so you know, this governor, the one that beat him, still put in a ban against trans girls playing sports. That's that's the that's the, the the option for a lot of red states. The red states is guy who literally wants to kill people by gas chamber versus person who wants to ban trans people from sports.
I remain hopeful that we will continue to work towards a more inclusive, fair, and compassionate policy. So, okay. Do you see what I'm, do you see what I've been getting at? Does it make sense to everyone who's watching now uh, precisely why I say that there is a need for more, uh, for more forward action from trans people? That there is a need for us, for our communities, for the allies of trans people, for, the, for trans people themselves to take proactive effort because these people are getting into power. These people and their allies who are, keep in mind, two wings of the same party. Notice. The fascist is the loud one, and then the other guy put the laws into place that help the fascist get closer to the worldview. You notice that, right? The other Republican still put a trans ban. He just pretended to be nicer than the crazy guy. It's very, it's, it's, it's very, very, very frustrating, and it's also very concerning. And... I don't know how to tell people how serious the state of affairs are. When I started streaming, I remember telling somebody that I know IRL who's not a streamer or anything in a private conversation. I remember saying that I genuinely believe that there is a possibility that there will be camps for trans people in the next couple of years. And I remember that person feeling like that was hyperbole and telling me that they felt that was hyperbolic. And I said, I don't think it is. And I've, I've said that on stream before, and I'm going to say it now. I do not think that that future is unthinkable in this country, unfortunately. Yeah, they won't call them camps. They'll call it something else. But the fact of the matter is, America is no stranger to doing these sorts of things. There are states right now pushing specifically for the legalization of conservative of, of sorry of conversion therapy. We watched a panel the other night where one of the one of the currently actually I think the most popular conservative streamer on Twitch actively advocated for torture for torch conversion torture. I remember getting in call, getting called insane in Hassan's community for saying the same thing back in 2018. Yeah. This there are there are guys. No, let me be let me be 100% clear with you, okay? Listen up. No conservative should ever feel comfortable saying something like that in public. But they do. Conservatives right now feel comfortable advocating for violent genocide for genocide of trans people in public and they are not f afraid at all because they don't think that we, they don't think we have support they don't think that we exist they think that we are 0.000001% of the planet but we're not there are a lot of us and we have a lot of supporters and guess what our supporters are better than theirs and this is why we need to take the step forward we need to be louder we need to be louder in our advocacy we need to be firmer in our advocacy we need to be harsher in our advocacy we need to fight for queer liberation and no less no more backsliding Aaron Green says, well, there's no reason for them to be afraid because there's no consequences for saying things that they like they want us all literally dead. Damn. I wonder if there was a way for consequences to happen. Maybe there is a way. Maybe maybe we have pa ways for for to make consequences happen to them. Do you guys think that, I don't know, maybe they should be banned or something? Maybe a, a ban is what I'm thinking. Yeah, mostly mostly bans. Um, that said, you all know that I go out of my way to fight transphobes. I go out of my way. In fact, I have been recently heavily criticized for being so preachy. Some of you know this. Some of you don't. And yes, I am a little preachy. And yes, I do preach queer liberation. And yes, I will continue doing so. And the reason why I do so is because the alternative is to cede the ground to people who want to put me on a firing line.
And if it comes down to having to choose between a future in which my fellow queers are put on a firing line or a future in which people think I'm a little too preachy and I hurt their feelings, I know which future I'm showing. I'm going to hurt a lot of cis feelings then. Unfortunately, uh, as at the moment, what we have is a huge mobilization of conservatives against trans people specifically. We've seen this for a long time, but we're reaching the point where this is, it, it's genuinely reaching a fever pitch. We've seen it ex escalating. We've seen it escalating since Trump was in power. We've seen more and more open transphobia. Let me talk about something. Visibility comes with a great price. Some of you have heard me talk about why I think visibility is so important. Yeah? But there's a, there is a downside to visibility, and it's this right here. The downside of visibility is that as, trans, as more people learn about the existence of trans people, as trans people are more public about their existence, more open about the fact that they exist and that they're not bad, that makes the enemies of those people aware of them. And what that means is that every single trans person who steps forward gets targeted. Every last one. And in addition, what I was talking about before, this effect of having your life constantly filled with stories about people threatening your death. That's no way to live. It's no fucking way to live. It's no way to live living in a society that, that regularly puts people threatening to genocide you in front of your face. There is... <laughs> and it's not just even that, right? Because it's not just the conservatives. Just the other day, we watched the, we watched the preeminent internet liberal, the most well-known uh, liberal streamer, make jokes about... 41%, 41% being a, of course, now outdated, but a statistic about how many trans people attempt suicide because the world is so bad to trans people. It is not just conservatives. And I remind you that we're not here to make friends with liberals. No one's here to make friends with liberals. No one's here to make friends with conservatives. We are here to liberate queer people. Well, I'm here to make a show that's mildly entertaining and also uh, educational and also has some politics mixed in it. But my bigger purpose, the thing that I believe in, is the liberation of queer people. But we're contending with some pretty dark shit. And it's going to require us sometimes pissing off people who want to pretend that they're our allies. And it's going to require us being willing to confront allies who aren't, who are actually, you know, giving bread or, or, or giving, uh, giving ground to our opponents. The transphobia online is out of control. I talked about this at the beginning of my stream, and I'm going to talk about it again now because we're doing a segment, and I think that's important to talk about. But guys, it is bad. It is so much. It is I see all I fucking see online is transphobia. It is it is overwhelming, and we have to push back hard. All of us, not just trans people, trans allies, not just. Not just gay people, gay allies. We have to push back hard, aggressively. And guess what? You're not wrong for doing that. Liberation is in our hands. We are the only people who can ever liberate us. Together, we liberate ourselves. We take it into our own hands. We decide the future. Actually, not as bad as you might think, Somniostatic. The problem is, is that a lot of people are very quiet about it. A lot of people are very quiet about whether they accept trans people or not. And it's not always just because of, um, it's not always just because they don't really have a reason. You know, like, you know, lots of people don't have a reason to, like, state they support X thing because they just don't know about it. But there are a lot of people who are accepting, but who pipe down 
if they're afraid of getting pushback or who stop talking because, well, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to cause a stink. I've talked about the, ex the, the, the experience of like the disappointing and sad experience of encountering minor transphobia, but I'm not talking, we're not talking about minor transphobia here. I've talked about how exhausting and tiring and sad it is to have like a, a, a like a gaming guild that you play with and when you go into group chat because nobody knows that you're trans one of the one some shithead in there is making jokes about trans people and others are laughing along and uh and you're just supposed to sit there and take it I've talked about that that's a minor awkward experience imagine this shit imagine you go to work and you're trans and your co-workers are talking about whether or not they agree with the guy who just said that you deserve to be on a on a firing line. You I don't think you can imagine the, that feeling of isolation all that well. But I would ask you to at least sympathize with it or at least try to empathize with it. We're not here to debate people's right to live. We are here to fight for trans liberation. I don't care if it looks clean. I don't care if it's nice. I don't care if people think that this isn't, oh, that's not the polite way to do things. I don't care. All I care about is whether trans people are liberated or not. That's what I care.